Okay, so this pole is, um, well it was made from all the bits that came off our aluminium one. So the end fittings are the same, but I have manufactured these extra pieces because I was going to a different construction. Um, so they are made out of, machined out of Delrin and fit inside what, this bigger these? pole. This piece here. That, that, that bit there is the original Okay. Fitting that went to the aluminium. Let me come this, this way. This is the piece hold I on, added in. Uh -huh. okay. um, yeah. The pole is tapered, um, so it's slightly smaller diameter here. And you put this here. leather here, over it? Uh, this leather just protects it when it's going up against the baby stay. Uh -huh. And also against the... Um, so back to your pole, it's tapered? It's tapered at either end. Um, it's now, instead of being J-length, it's made to be exactly the same length as the bowsprit when it's extended. And why is that? So that we can swap from running the asymmetrical tacked off the bowsprit. If we want to sail a flatter angle, we can then pull the tack further back. But then when we're jibing it, it means we can come bring the pole forward, transfer the tack line, or the tack line then becomes all the load we let the brace off um, we sail a, a hotter angle before the jibe I can move the pole over get it all set up and then jibe the kite and um, rehook it's made out of primarily carbon fibre but I gave it because Douglas fir is very, very good in compression, um, it has a very thin-walled Douglas fir tube. The, the, the fir is only two and a half millimetres thick, and it's coated on both sides with unidirectional carbon fibre. Um, once I had done the, the, the Douglas fir in a big wide plank, I then split it up into narrow strips, made the cylinder out of those, and then laid more carbon fibre on the outside, and then it gets several layers of double dye, a double bias cloth, which stops the fibres from bursting out when it's under compression, because the spinnaker poles are always in compression.